Hello. Welcome to the Dark Web Association. I am Luna. Today's topic will be types of attacks. How many types of attacks can there be? All these attacks are called security attacks. In short, it is about privacy, data breaches, and so on. Whether they are networked or physical attacks, we will also tell you about them. What types of attacks are there? Which helps hackers to breach your privacy? You can see on the screen, there are many types of attacks, man in the middle, phishing, spear phishing, drive-by attack, botnet, social engineering attack, SQL injection attack, malware attack, XSS attack, password attack, keylogger attack, eavesdropping attack. There are many more, and new ones keep coming, but the main topics covered are included here, right? So we will go one by one about so many attacks. The first attack is called a man-in-the-middle attack. A man-in-the-middle attack occurs when a third person comes in between two people and provokes them to fight, or the third person gains information about the conflict. The same concept is here. If I am using two persons or two assets, or one person and another web server, when there is communication between them, then using the gap breach and security vulnerabilities, a third person captures the data, looks at the data, or can modify the data, this is a man-in-the-middle attack. Say I am a client, and I am talking to the server in the sense that I am trying to access it or I have a request that is being communicated to the server. During that time, if my data or transfer process is not encrypted, it means my data is being transferred in plain text and received in plain text. So, in between some network traffic, a third person intercepts the request and can access it, see it, and modify it. And then the request will be sent, and the response you get will be different. They get what they want according to the third person. So, this action comes in the man in the middle attack. The name is like this. Man in the middle. Someone is in the middle between two who is doing something. Done by hijacking IP spoofing. How does this happen? As a session hijack happens, IP spoofing is there, so when will this happen? When your transfer process happens between you and the server or between two parties communication, when there is no encryption, then. Encryption is very necessary, because it is very difficult to decrypt a tunnel or a code. So what is the prevention process? Do encryption or authentication of a digital certificate. A digital certificate means an SSL certificate. Take encryption so that you can use VPN, proxy, etc. As we see in WhatsApp, end-to-end -end encryption means that whenever you talk to someone and the other person responds, this communication remains between the two of you. No third person can see it, although they can try to see it. It involves authentication, but terms and conditions of privacy are applied. With the help of these terms and conditions, no third party can access the information unless the government wants to access it. Many attacks come from the user's side or the web application's side. Attacks happen on the server of the web. So, we will learn more about these attacks in the upcoming videos. Our second attack is phishing and spear phishing. Phishing can be done through fraudulent emails with clickable links. In short, it means that if you receive an email, any actions related to the email are performed through a link, not through a text message or a mobile number. If there is a text message, there will be a link. It will be a link where you can click. For example, you share a link on Instagram and copy and paste it into the browser. Generally, we send links on WhatsApp or any social networking site, and we can access them with one click. So, this is also the same you will receive a link through email or text message. Generally, it comes through email because text messages are with the ISP, while email is not with the ISP. So, mostly, you receive this link through email. The link claims that you have won the lottery, we are from the bank and your bank account is hacked, help us to recover it by clicking on the link, your bank account, KYC is pending, complete it by clicking the link, or need to address some authentication or privacy issue. If you wish to proceed, access the link below and provide the required data. Once you access the link, click on it and enter your user ID and password. If you have entered your user ID and password without verifying the legitimacy of the email, and if you are unsure whether the email is spam or not, 
it means, in short, you have lost your account. Email spamming has significantly decreased due to enhanced security measures. However, in the past, it was challenging to distinguish between real and fake emails. The genuine type of email, and the confidence it instilled, led everyone to believe it was essential to access the email. Consequently, when individuals entered their user ID and password, not discerning whether the email was authentic or not, the person or attacker intercepting the network would gain access to the ID and password. They would then redirect users to a separate page, facilitating Facebook and Gmail hacks. It's important to note that Facebook and Gmail are commonly targeted through phishing. Attackers often send a fake Facebook link, claiming that your password has been disabled or expired. Clicking on the link takes you to a counterfeit Facebook page that is convincingly crafted to deceive users. Upon entering your user ID and password, an error message may appear, or you might be redirected to another deceptive page. These pages are designed to be indistinguishable from the real ones. Whenever you create a website or a company creates a website and if they don't have an SSL certificate or encryption, then it is mostly insecure in network traffic, so generally attackers find such websites and behind the code like PHP, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, etc., so they go to the code on the behind page and inject their malicious code so that they can access and hack the website. If there is a website named as HTTPS, then it is secure, we can't hack it easily because the encryption is strong. Mostly in the website of HTTP and PHP, there is no security, it is plain so it is very easy to attack there so this is the drive attack there is an image on the screen if it is HTTPS it is secure. If it is HTTP it means it is an insecure website, this website can be hacked at some point. So if you access such a website and if you log in data or input then remember not to log in personal information. So this was a drive-by attack. Now comes a botnet attack. What is a botnet attack? One type of bot, BOT has taken a short form. BOT is a type of robot, but it works within a network. BOT nets are system networks that attack, inject, and malware. For example, if you have seen the robot picture, there are many robots. They are good robots, bad robots. They are made according to the programming. So, if you have programmed a robot in such a way that it is malicious, that is, it has bad intentions, then it will work according to this. If you have updated the software and programmed it with good intentions, it will work well. It is based on AI. Hackers create malicious software and leave it in the network. And their programming work is to attack a particular system. So that they can bring down the system. This can lead to DDoS. Now, when they attack a particular system, they have two tasks. DOS and DDoS mean denial of service attack and distributed denial of service attack. In the next types of attacks, we will know about DOS and DDoS, what DDoS and DDoS are. So, the botnet works by default. The attacker just has to put a command, and with that command, all the botnets present in network traffic, the programming they have created, follow the command process and attack the target system. Like you have seen in a movie in which many drones are running together, and someone is sitting somewhere and typing commands into the system, like in the Iron Man movie. In Iron Man movie, many robots were made by Iron Man in a third-party company, and the programming that Iron Man did, maybe if you have seen Iron Man 2 movie, so with one command, he handled all the robots, Iron Man robots. If you put a command, they would attack a particular target. If you put another command, they would change in different directions. So, this is the work of the botnet. All of this works in network traffic. Our next topic is social engineering. Social engineering is not an IT-related attack. It generally happens in our environment, in the atmosphere, hacking with humans, human-to-human -human interactions. They gain trust and collect information about you. This is the same with social engineering and shoulder surfing. What is shoulder surfing? It is looking from behind while you are typing or sitting at the system, observing what your system is typing, what your password is, and who you are talking to, all this personal information is considered shoulder surfing. What is social engineering? By talking to you, by gaining your trust, 
social engineering is to find the personal details of the victim. Generally, if you become friends with someone gaining information based on trust is social engineering. Our next topic is SQL injection. SQL injection means attacking the SQL server, structured query language, SQL, is a database language that collects data according to the database. So, if someone goes to the database server and hacks the database system, it is called SQL injection. It occurs when cyber attackers inject malicious code into SQL. This means that when an attack happens, the input is malicious code, whether it is a script made by yourself or based on tools. Their work is characterized by malicious intent, and whatever the task, it is referred to as SQL injection. In SQL injection, you have to go to the SQL database, attack it, insert a malicious code, and access the database, whether it is admin rights access or the database server. That is called SQL injection. A malware attack. Malware is the full name of malicious software. Malware attacks come in various types. You can refer to them as viruses, trojans, rootkits, adware, and spyware. We will discuss each of them when we delve into malware. But the basic definition is that malware attacks exist, and all these attacks are programming-based, capable of either shutting down your system or taking over your system. Malicious software can manipulate your network traffic, bring down your entire system or the organization's server, and hang the system. All these are functions of malware attacks, where attackers use different types of malicious software to compromise security. This is based on security breaches, and all these are executed through malware attacks. Malware is created through programming, reaching the root level to hang the operating system or perform any malicious activity. To prevent malware attacks, there are two or three ways. Use antivirus software properly, update the firewall properly, and avoid downloading unwanted software. For instance, on an Android phone, you should go directly to the Google Play Store, ensuring it has Google protection, to download applications and minimize risks. If it is available on the Play Store, it means that it is less risky and legal. So, stop downloading unwanted software to prevent mobile access. Now, let's discuss access attacks. What is an access attack? It is called cross-site scripting. It is a very powerful weapon in the hacking world. They are executed using a third-party website to inject malicious JavaScript. In an access attack, JavaScript is injected and converted into a malicious form to target the user's system, the victim, through the web browser, thereby gaining access. Access attacks occur within the web browser, and there are three types of attacks that we will delve into in the future. So, this is another attack through which we can access the web browser target system using JavaScript code. Now, let's move on to the password attack. In a password attack, your password is generally guessed, whether it is dictionary-based, numerical, or alphanumeric. Attacks are carried out based on the authentication mechanism to gain access to the user's account. Password attacks come in different types, depending on how the user's account can be accessed. A login ID and password are required to log into any account. Whenever we obtain a login ID or password on the system, we are advised to use a minimum number of characters, include alphanumeric characters, and use a combination of uppercase, lowercase, and special characters. If all these combinations are used, hacking becomes very challenging for individual user accounts. If we attempt to hack the server, that is a different scenario. Password attacks occur in two ways, brute force attacks and dictionary-based attacks. A brute force attack involves trying all possible password combinations, including numbers and letters, from small a to capital A. The combinations of small and capital letters are tested in a brute force attack. In a dictionary-based attack, the attack relies on a common password database, which is essentially a dictionary of passwords. Generally, people commonly use it. So, using it commonly, guessing the password and attacking it, or the combination of small and capital letters, the attacks are based on the dictionary. Our next attack is the DOS and DDoS attack. We will know a little about it in upcoming videos. What happens in DOS and DDoS attacks? The full name of DOS is a denial-of-service attack. 
The full name of DDoS is a distributed denial of service attack. Internet access is good, but you still can't access that page due to a DOS attack. A distributed denial of service attack is that in which multiple networks. Many compromised networks try to attack the target system. Many compromised networks mean I have already told you about bots. Many bots are ready to put malicious code in the network and attack a target system through command. So many compromised networks try to attack the target system. So if they attack a single target system, then the system will get hanged, won't work, and will have more load, which will help the efficiency of the system be reduced and crash. Generally, we would have heard that some websites have crashed. The meaning of a crash is that the access to the website is so much at a time, which means 1 lakh, 2 lakh, 3 lakh, 1 crore, 2 crores, and many more. People access it at a time, so it is not possible to respond to every request of that website, that web server is not efficient so it gets down, and the system gets hung and crashes. So this was a DOS and DDoS attack. A keylogger is a type of malicious software or hardware that secretly records keystrokes on a computer or device. It captures sensitive information such as passwords and login credentials, posing a security threat. For example, if a keylogger is installed on a computer, it can silently record a user's keystrokes, allowing an attacker to access confidential information like online banking credentials. To protect against keyloggers, it's crucial to use antivirus software keep systems updated, and practice caution with downloads and links from untrusted sources. Employing two-factor authentication adds an extra layer of security. What is an eavesdropping attack? It is when two people are talking, and a third person is listening to them. These are called eavesdropping attacks. Generally, it is a telephonic network that is accessed. If one person is talking to another person through a telephonic network, and a third party listens to the conversation through network traffic. So this was today's topic, if you have any doubt regarding anything, you can comment us and text us on Instagram. Stay connected for more updates.